Hey everyone, welcome to this webinar about the Dana Easy ID tool and the ReadyShaft program. You know, we developed the ReadyShaft program because we saw there was a need for a quick ship drive shaft program. Now, the great minds here at Dana came up with the Ready Shaft program, where we will build and ship a drive shaft within 24 hours. Now, if you find that hard to believe, you won't believe that there's over 12,000 part numbers within the portfolio. So, let's go ahead and dive in to the Dana Easy ID tool. Here on DanaAftermarket.com, there is a logo that identifies the Dana Ready Shaft Easy ID tool. So now that we're on that page, you'll see that there is a shaft and it has a part number, which is all well and good if you have a label. It's legible. It's not covered in dirt, grease, or someone just ripped it off for the sake of ripping it off. However, if you do have a label that's there, we can enter that part number and it will generate a ready shaft part number. Now, once again, the smart numbering system of the ready shaft program makes it super easy on you and your team. All it does is adds an R as a suffix on the end of the part number. So you have an OE Dana part number with an R at the end to signify that this is part of the ready shaft program. Now, that will build and ship within 24 hours. If you leave the R off, you will be calling me saying, Matt, where's my ready shaft that you said would be here within two days? And I will kindly put the link to this video in the email as a reply saying, you need to put an R at the end for it to be a ready shaft. So let's imagine for a moment that we do not have a part number that's available. It's missing, it's gone, the label's not there. Let's go ahead and click, do not have a part number. So on this page, you'll see that we have an SPL light disclaimer. And what that means is if you have a two piece drive shaft from the SPL light program, a midship assembly, a forward and a rear drive shaft, that this program is not for you. Now, if you have a traditional SPL drive shaft, we can go ahead and continue, and we'll hit the continue button now. Well, you knew that legal was going to come up, and this is the Dana legal disclaimer. Within this disclaimer, we're saying that the measurements that you take on the drive shaft that's in front of you is not Dana's responsibility for you to measure it properly. So I highly recommend that you calibrate your Dana tape measure and make sure that all your measurements are accurate because no refunds or returns will be allowed. So let's continue and move on. On this page, we need to identify where on the truck did that shaft come from? Is it a coupling shaft? Is it a drive shaft? Or is it an inner axle shaft on the rear of the vehicle? Now, if you do not know where that shaft came from, Maybe you could go in the back shop and find somebody that does know where the shaft came from. Let's go ahead and select inner axle shaft as this example in front of us is exactly that. Now, on the next page, we're talking about a short couple and inter axle selector. This is going to be identified with tubing. Is there tubing present on the shaft? And we can identify that with two welds. Now, if it only has one weld or no welds, there is no tubing present on that shaft. In this example, there is, so we'll go ahead and select yes, there is two welds. On this page, we're going to be talking about yoke identification. What type of yoke is on the shaft in front of you? Now, this example has two full round yokes. This is another example of a full round yoke. This here is an example of a half round yoke, which is identified with straps and bolts. Now, one thing to remember when we're talking about half round yokes 
is that you must replace the bolts and straps every time you service this yoke. It makes it easy to remove the shaft from the vehicle, but just remember, always purchase new straps and bolts for the half round yokes. Another style of yoke is going to be a flange style yoke. We'll talk about those in a little bit. So this shaft has a full round yoke and we need to identify what is the series. You may be familiar with the Spicer ruler. It's been around for a long time and over time it's actually had new part numbers added and it's gotten much bigger. In this situation, since it's a full round, we'll use this tang across the lugs and that will identify that this yoke is an SPL 170. Starting with the Spicer full round style, simply place the ruler tab on the outside of the lug or ear and position the ruler across the yoke to the outside of the opposite lug or ear. The corresponding line on the ruler will identify the drive shaft series. Spicer half round or quick disconnect style, place the notched end of the ruler on the inside of the cup retainer tang and position the ruler across the yoke to the inside of the opposite cup retainer tang. This corresponding line of the ruler will identify the drive shaft series. If you do not have a Spicer ruler, contact your local sales representative for them to give you some. Let's go ahead and select SPL 170 and we'll move to the next page. On this page, we need to identify what type of U-joint we're working with. Is it an SPL that's identified with four round bearing cups? Is it a full round that's identified with four bearing plates or is it a half round that's identified with two round cups and two bearing plates? In this instance, it's not part of our micro series. It's actually an SPL 170. Let's go ahead and select SPL and go to the next page. On this page, we're going to be identifying the length of the tubing. Now, it's very simple to measure the length of the tube, and you do that from measuring at the center of weld to the center of weld. And we're gonna take our calibrated ruler, or tape measure, whatever you call it, and we're gonna put this here on the tubing itself, and it measures 2.75 inches. Would you look at that? Under the tube length, there is 2.75 inches. That's a calibrated tape measure. However, we also offer a metric measurement as well. So if you have a, uh, a measurement device that does millimeters, that would be a good place for you to put that in. On this page, we're going to be talking about the collapsed length of the shaft. So if I were to measure this shaft from center of U-joint to center of U-joint, I'm going to get the wrong measurement. So we must select, is it a yoke? Is it a flange style? Or is it a flange and yoke style? So that I measure appropriately. Let's go ahead and select U-joint center to center. So what you need to do is you need to take the shaft and collapse it. You will hear an audible click when this shaft is collapsed. It is hard to miss and you'll also feel some physical feedback. Just like that. Now, find the two strongest guys in the shop or gals, depending. Have them collapse that shaft while you measure from center of U-joint to center of U-joint in this case, it's going to be 20.75 inches. So we're going to go ahead and select that and move forward. So on this page, we're looking at the installed length of the shaft. So let's say that you no longer have the shaft. The shaft has been thrown or um, let's just say it's completely missing for some reason. We can also 
use the Dana Easy ID tool to measure the installed length of the shaft using the output yoke and the input yoke. Now, in this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the center of the U-joint to the center of the U-joint. And we're coming up with 23.6 inches. Now, if this side here had a flange connected to the yoke, you would measure from the center of the U-joint to the edge of that flange. However, this example has two yokes that we will measure the installed length from. So let's go ahead and select the installed length. It's 23.6 inches. Perfect. Now, on this page, we're gonna be measuring the diameter of the tubing. I have a digital caliper here. We're gonna put that on the tubing itself until we feel light friction. And we're gonna come up with 4.59 inches. So we'll go ahead and select 4.59 inches on the tubing size. On this page, we're talking about phasing. We get a lot of questions about phasing. Phasing is talking about how the ears of the yoke are in line. If you were to have a shaft that was out of phase, your yokes would actually be at different angles from each other. Now, phasing is performed here by the great minds at Dana, and it counteracts the vibrations within the drive line. So we calculate and calibrate each drive shaft so that it counteracts the vibrations with the drive line. We do not recommend that you take the drive shaft apart and re-weld it so that it's in phase or that you rotate the spline sleeve so that they are out of phase and that you are controlling the vibrations yourself. It's done from an OE level and that's done for you. So let's go ahead and select that this is in phase. Now, the yoke angle, it can be a high angle or a low angle. And that is identified by the measurement of the center of the U-joint to the weld. Now, a low angle is normally around 3.5, 3.7 inches. A high angle is typically around four and a half inches. So let's go ahead and measure this shaft here from the center of U-joint to the center of the weld. And I'm coming up with four and a half inches. That would indicate that this shaft and yoke are a high angle yoke. So let's go ahead and select a high angle. Would you look at that? Within 10 minutes, we generated a part number using nothing but dimensional data. I really appreciate you taking time to watch this video with me today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our technical support team. We'll catch you next time.